for the purpose of resurrecting uh, the meaning and significance of Handel's Messiah. Uh, the piece was composed over a five-month period, well, actually over a three-day, of a 24-day period, but was prepared in uh, 1741. It was first premiered in Dublin, 1742, April 13th. Now, if you go on to various websites, they will tell you about how it was done for the purpose of paying for, through charitable contributions, something called the Foundling Hospital of London, and that's true. But the piece was premiered in Dublin, Ireland. And it wasn't merely for the hospital, it was also to pay debt. And the debt of hundreds of debtors was paid as a result of that day's performance, April 13, 1742, of Handel's Messiah in Ireland. Uh, Handel had been first brought to England in 1710 and 11, and then he settled there from 1712 on, so he'd been there for about 30 years. Uh, he was basically sent to England by Gottfried Leibniz as a result of uh, a, a much larger project to civilize England, which Leibniz had taken on in 1710, 11, 12. So Handel was very familiar with England, and he was very familiar with the problems of England. And the piece was the most political and at the same time most transcendent music that was available to Handel and was available to and made available to the English people. There are many comments that have been made about this piece over time. I'm going to just take a comment from someone you may not expect. This is Martin Luther King speaking about Handel's music in the context of a speech called Shattered Dreams, Sermon. The sermon begins this way. It says, our sermon today brings us face to face with one of the most agonizing problems of human experience. Very few, if any of us, are able to see our hopes fulfilled. So many of the hopes and dreams of our mortal lives are unrealized. Each of us, like Schubert, begins a symphony that is never finished. And from there, he begins to discuss uh, the plight of the Apostle Paul, who had planned to go to Spain to try to convert pagans there to Christianity and never got there because he was executed in Rome. And he compares Handel's situation to that of Paul. And Martin Luther King says this about Handel. His health and fortunes had reached its lowest, its lowest ebb. His right side had become paralyzed. His money was all gone. His creditors seized him and threatened him with imprisonment. For a brief time, he was threatened to give up the fight but he rebounded again to compose the greatest inspiration, which is the epic Messiah. The Hallelujah Chorus was not born in a sequestered villa in Spain, but in a narrow and undesirable cell. And that indeed was true of Handel, who would go blind later. He was very infirm, and he had to mobilize himself because there was a higher cause, there was a higher purpose. The purpose for which we called this is that, as we know, our country and our people are desperately hurting. And just now, over at Riverside Church, there's a meeting going on of people from the Garner family and from the other families that have uh, lost loved ones in violent ways. The city is threatened, as is the nation, with dissolution. And so we come here today for the purpose of resurrecting a solution that people used to know. It was called prayer, but it's often misunderstood. One prays for the strength to act according to one's own convictions. You don't pray for things. You pray for something beyond that, the strength to love. And that is the purpose of our co-participation today in the recreation of Handel's Messiah.